coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Drone light show to illuminate night sky at AirVenture. Drones held track changes in San Andreas Fault. And ANN will cover UAS news from Oshkosh 2018. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. Welcome to the Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned Program, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned in partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. For the first time in North America, a drone light show will be a part of an air show when EAA AirVenture Oshkosh 2018 presents up to 100 lighted drones in flight during night air shows on July 25th and 28th. Great Lakes Drone Company, based in Waterloo, Michigan, will be flying their drones and is one of just two U.S. companies authorized by the FAA for such displays. EAA's Dave Champson notes that what makes this event especially memorable are the intricate maneuvers that are capable by up to 100 synchronized drones, highlighting the possibilities of safe and responsible drone flying. People come to AirVenture to see aerial excitement not seen anywhere else, and these performances certainly continue that tradition. During AirVenture, the LED-equipped drones will perform a 10-minute The History of Flight show, complete with musical accompaniment. When one thinks of the place where flying innovation and excitement occur, Oshkosh instantly comes to mind, said Matt Quinn, president of Great Lakes Drone Company. The EAA AirVenture Oshkosh Night Air Shows began at 8 p.m. on July 25th and July 28th. Announced schedules are subject to change based on weather or operational conditions. You're watching Airborne Unmanned on Aero TV. We'll be back with more in a moment. Hello, fellow pilots. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. Well, we're headed off to Oshkosh for Air Venture, and we're really looking forward to it. Martha and I are going to be making a bunch of talks there. And we hope you'll come by and say hi to us. We'd love to meet you. And by the way, stay tuned right here to PropWash. We're going to be making some exciting announcements direct from AirVenture. Welcome back. In the next Unmanned Minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. The FAA has posted a notice for its next Drone Advisory Committee meeting to be held July 17th at the Santa Clara Convention Center in Santa Clara, California. The FAA's Drone Advisory Committee is a broad-based, long-term federal advisory committee that provides the FAA with advice on key UAS integration issues by helping to identify challenges and prioritize improvements. The committee helps to create broad support for an overall integration strategy and vision. Agricultural drone startup company Dropcopter, which is based in California and central New York, recently made headlines as the first company to successfully pollinate almonds, cherries, and apples using drones. The company has been conducting studies on supplemental drone pollination since 2015. The company recently released results from its 2018 third-party studies, which report a massive increase in almonds and cherries, as well as surprising developments for apples. Shebel demonstrated SAR and maritime surveillance capabilities of the Camcopter S100 unmanned air system from June 21st to July 1st to the Belgium Navy. Shebel's trials for the Belgium Navy aimed at building an enhanced knowledge base and developing a successful concept of operations for the use of UAS in support of search and rescue as well as intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions. The Camcopter S100 was equipped with two payloads the L3 Westcam MX-10, and the Overwatch Imaging PT-8 Ocean Watch. A drone made up to look like Superman was crashed into a French nuclear plant last week by Greenpeace to demonstrate what the group says is a site's vulnerability to such attacks and giving drones a black eye in the process. Greenpeace said it flew its drone into the no-fly zone around the nuclear plant near Lyon, before crashing it into the wall of a spent fuel pool building. Greenpeace has previously staged break-ins of French nuclear plants, which supply 75% of the country's electricity. 
That was our Unman Minute. Now back to the rest of the news. Scientific study of the evolution of the southern end of the San Andreas Fault is of vital importance given the earthquake-prone nature of Southern California. Mapping fault zones and land surface changes that resulted from previous earthquakes can deepen the understanding of hazards posed by the fault. The Department of Geological Sciences at San Diego State University has teamed with Geodetics Incorporated to research the San Andreas Fault in Southern California. The study scanned the faults with Geodetic's drone-based GeoMMS LiDAR camera mapping system that uses Velodyne LiDAR technology and an RGB camera to deliver the most accurate 3D data on the market. The research is focusing on evaluating both past large slip events and a seismic creep, which are tremors that release their energy over weeks or months rather than seconds. It is looking to discover new fault zones and active fault traces, which are visible marks where a geological fault meets the ground surface. The research is also looking to detect fault slip that has resulted from past earthquakes. In their study, SDSU researchers are developing a comparison between several techniques for evaluating past slip events and looking to establish precision and accuracy of the techniques relative to each other. In less than two weeks, nearly 30 people from the Aero News Network will be gathering at the world's greatest aviation event. As we have for over 20 years, ANN and our partners will be presenting hundreds of stories in written photographic audio and or video formats to interested aviators around the globe. Over the past few years, more and more news is being made by the unmanned aviation segment, both personal as well as professional, and Oshkosh has embraced the revolution aggressively. Our daily news updates from the grounds of Whitman Field, Oshkosh, Wisconsin, the home of EAA Air Venture 2018, will be every day during the event. We will also be posting stories to aero-news.net as well as aerotv.net and supplementing that with Aero TV features, podcasts, and an intense amount of social media activity. As we approach the July 23rd start of AirVenture 2018, we'll be sure to fill you in on all the ways you can enjoy our coverage. And by the way, we have some amazing news to share with you about our work with the Drone World 2. But take our word for it, this is the best work we do all year. We're intensely proud of what we do there, and you don't want to miss any of it. More news to follow. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our Airborne Unlimited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. And more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned at auvsi.org and airborne-unmanned.net. We'll see you next week.